Welcome to the 5 Minute Gap, a series of instructional videos that's aimed at helping you get up and running with Google applications in your classroom. In this video we're going to look at creating a calendar that could be useful for your classes and we're later going to see how we can share that calendar on a website and help keep students informed as to what's going on in the classroom. So you could think of a variety of uses uh, for calendars. This is just one example of how you might find it useful. Okay, so the first thing that uh, you'll have to do is log into Gmail. I'm just going to resize this to fit inside the recording area. There we go. So go on into Gmail and then from the menu bar click on Calendar. You'll see that you have a default calendar that's named after your account. So in my case, uh, or in this case, it's a five minute gap calendar. So let's go into the calendar settings and just check that things are okay. So here we are in the settings. We're looking at the five minute gap and we should go in there and check in particular that the calendar time zone down here that this is set to Eastern Time Toronto. If it is not then click on set my time zone and then select it from the drop down menu and save it. There are other options that you can go in and play with later on. So that's your default calendar. I would suggest just using that for uh, general events that are of a personal nature to you and any publicly shared stuff that you put on a different calendar. So let's create a calendar called classes. So again we're going to go down to this drop down menu and we're going to create a new calendar. And why not just call it what it is? Uh, my classes or you could put your name in there. You provide a description of that calendar if you like. Probably not necessary since students will know exactly what it is that you're creating. And then make sure that you have the time zone correct. And then create the calendar. What I'm going to show you is a neat little uh, trick for... Well, you can see I've already done it here for uh, period one classes. I've already created a um, time interval and then I've that interval has been repeated for a uh, number of days. So let's go back to the week view and I'll show you how to do that. So let's pretend that we have a period two class. Let's just click on any box in here and make sure that it's going to go to the right calendar. So in this case I want to choose my classes calendar and you're going to see that it's going to come up orange. These classes are attributed to the five minute uh, gap calendar. So this one is going to my classes calendar which is where it should be. And let's edit the event. And period 2 starts at 9.55 and goes to 11 10. And let's repeat this. And if we were doing this at the beginning of the, v the year, then we would select Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, Thursday, and whoops, not Saturday. And we would repeat this, oh, let's say we have however many instructional days we have. I was just going to put 95 for now. And click done. And save. So you can see now that um, well, I ha oh, I have no title put in here and you might want to fix that. So let's go back in. This is just showing that we can actually go back in and, and correct all of these things. So this is my period two class. There we go. And it's going to ask me if I want to save it for all events. Yes, I want to save this for all of these events. So there, they're all corrected now. And I can check that looking at the months. So there's my period two class. And back to the week view. I'm just going to turn off the five minute gap. So you just so you can tell it's on if the color is on or not. So there it's on, there it's off. Now we can go in here and record what we've done. So description, homework. 
you know, page 12 questions 1 through 100. <laughs> there we go. And we can save that. And again, it's going to ask us, this time we only want this event because presumably on day two we'll give them the next hundred questions to do. So now students can, when they see this, they can click on the My Period 2 class that you've shared to see the description, to see the details. So that's the basics of creating calendars and we're going to see how we can use those in a website. That's all for now.